Hey everyone, welcome to our deep dive all about short-term rentals and hospitality investments. Yeah, it's going to be a fun one. It is, and we've got uh, a ton of information to get through. We do. You guys sent in a lot of articles and market reports, even some personal notes. Yeah, and you know, the landscape of this whole short-term rental thing has really shifted. It has. Even just in the past few years. So it's great that we have all these different sources to kind of get Take a full the, picture. the full picture. Absolutely. So we're talking about everything from like that classic vacation rental on Airbnb right. or VRBO all the way up to like boutique hotels and wellness retreats. Yeah, like a whole gamut. The whole thing. Oh, okay. So cool. our mission today is to really pull out those golden nuggets of information yeah. that'll help you guys kind of navigate totally. this whole world. I think there's going to be some good aha moments. Yeah. For sure. In this one. For sure. So let's start with the basics. Okay. Let's define what exactly IS short-term rental housing. It seems pretty self-explanatory. It does. But I feel like there might be... There are some nuances. Nuances, yeah. For sure. What do we need to be aware of? So you're right. The term itself is very simple. It's essentially any residential property rented out for a short period of time, usually less than 30 days. Oh. But what's interesting is that the regulations surrounding these rentals can vary drastically from one city to the next. Oh, like I've heard stories about some cities like putting caps yes. on the number of permits available. Yes. And some cities are really cracking down. Wow. Because you have local residents that are concerned about, you know, noise or parking or the impact on long-term rental availability. Oh, uh, so it's really a mixed bag. It is. Yeah. So for investors, that means due diligence is critical. Yeah. Because imagine you sink all this money into a property only to find out that you can't even legally rent it out short term. Oh, that's like the worst case scenario. Total nightmare. So before we even get into property types, yeah. we need to understand those local regulations. 100%. That's priority number one. Okay, so assuming we found a location where the rules work in our favor. Okay. Let's talk about the different options we have. All right. Within short term rentals. Yeah. And let's start with the most familiar one. Okay. Vacation rentals. Okay. Those bread and butter of like Airbnb and VRBO. Right. But I'm curious, what are the real like pros and cons? Totally. Yeah. There's definitely more to it than meets the eye. Beyond the surface. For sure. So, yeah, the potential for high nightly rates is alluring. Right. And you also have that flexibility to, you know, block out dates for your own personal use of the property. And travelers love that, you know, live like a local kind of experience. Yeah, do. they love that experience. So there are a lot of advantages there. But There are. But there must be downsides. There are. Uh, managing vacation rentals can be incredibly demanding. Okay. It's a lot of work. In what ways? Think constant guest communication, turnover cleaning, potential maintenance issues that might pop up. Mm. It's not exactly passive income. That's a good point. Yeah. And, you know, I'm seeing in the research and all the sources yeah. the issue of seasonality. Yeah. Huge factor. It seems to be a big one. For sure, because a beach house might be a cash cow in the summer. Right. But what happens the rest of the year? Yeah. So investors need to have a really solid plan in place for those shoulder seasons or maybe even consider a location that has year-round appeal. That makes sense. Yeah. So what about for someone who wants, like, more predictable income, less yeah. hands-on management? What would you suggest for them? I would say that's where extended stay in corporate rentals come in. Okay. This segment offers a lot more stability because you're targeting business travelers, relocating families, or even medical professionals on longer assignments. Oh, and I've heard that corporate clients are often willing to pay a premium oh, yeah. for that convenience. They are because they value things like fully equipped kitchens, in-unit laundry, reliable high-speed internet. Right. But that also probably means higher expectations Does. from those guests. Higher expectations in terms of Amenities and responsiveness. So fewer guests, but maybe more demanding guests. Potentially, yeah. And it's going to require a different approach when it comes to furnishing and equipping that property. Right. You really have to think about that specific market. Absolutely. Now, what if we're drawn to like a location that's known for specific events or attractions? Okay, so think like a ski resort town or an area that hosts a huge annual festival. Right, like a really popular hiking trail. Exactly. Or a concert venue or something. That's where destination and event-based rentals come into play. Okay. Think about properties that are near these things. Okay. Music festivals, sporting events. The key here is to really capitalize on those peak seasons and to have a very niche marketing strategy. So you're really targeting a specific traveler then? 
Yes, almost like a micro niche okay. within the vacation rental market. That makes sense. You can even partner with local businesses to create package deals or offer unique experiences that cater to that very specific group. Oh, that's cool. So you could really get creative. You can get very creative. But wouldn't that also mean greater reliance on like yes. that seasonal income? You are essentially banking on those peak periods to carry you through the flower months. Okay. It can be lucrative, mm -hmm. but it definitely requires a very savvy approach to pricing and marketing. So higher risk, higher reward kind of thing. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. That's really interesting. I'm learning a lot. Good. I'm glad. I like it. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I'm realizing we've covered a lot of ground already. We have. From, you know, yeah. understanding the rules and regulations to, you know, diving deep into these different types of short-term rentals. Right. But there's this whole other layer yes. that we haven't even touched on yet. Okay. And that's like the financial side of things. Ah, uh, yes. The numbers. That's where things get real. Yeah. And that's also where a lot of dreams come crashing down. Right. So let's break it down. Okay. When we talk about the financials of a hospitality investment, yep. what are the essentials someone needs to understand? So first and foremost, you need a crystal clear picture of all the costs involved. And I'm not just talking about the purchase price of the property. Right, because there are upfront costs like renovations, yes, furnishing, maybe landscaping. Precisely, and those can vary wildly depending on the type of property and obviously the level of luxury you're aiming for. Yeah, a rustic cabin in the woods is gonna cost a lot less to set up than a totally. like sleek condo in a city. Completely. But it's not even just about those initial costs, is it? It's not, there's a whole world of ongoing expenses that can really sneak up on you. Like what? Think property taxes, insurance utilities, regular maintenance cleaning between guests. And don't forget about potential management fees if you're not handling everything yourself. Oh, gosh. It really adds up. It does, especially with properties that have high turnover rates or require specialized maintenance. Right. Accurate budgeting is so critical. I can see why. You need a solid grasp on both your fixed costs like property taxes and your variable costs that fluctuate with occupancy. Okay. And this helps you determine your break-even point and then project your potential profitability. That makes sense, but yeah. projecting profitability with all these different variables right. seems really tricky. It's definitely not a simple equation, but there are tools and resources available to help you make educated guesses. Okay, what are some of the tools? Well, a good starting point is to research average daily rates and occupancy rates for comparable properties in your area. So you're saying look at what other people are charging yes. and how often they're filling their properties. Exactly, and platforms like Airbnb and VRBO yeah. often provide this kind of data. Oh, that's helpful. It, it gives you a benchmark to start with. Right. Now, of course, your unique property and your marketing efforts will play a role, but it's a helpful place to start. So then you use that data to kind of create a revenue projection. Precisely, yeah. it's an estimate, of course. Right but it helps you see if your potential income can cover all those expenses we talked about. Right. And hopefully generate a profit. And that's where those factors like seasonality and your target audience really come in. They do, because if your revenue stream is heavily reliant on specific seasons or events, you have to factor that in. Yeah. And if you're going after a niche market like eco-conscious travelers or families with pets, you need to make sure there's actually demand there to support your pricing. It's like a real balancing act. It is. You're trying to attract enough guests at a price point that allows you to cover your costs right. and make a profit. Yeah. But you also have to provide an experience that people want. Yeah, it's a good point. And this is where those unique selling points we discussed earlier become really important. Yes. Because if you're offering something that guests are willing to pay a premium for, right. that impacts your revenue. For sure. It's also about being realistic about your expenses. Right. And building in some wiggle room for unexpected costs. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you're saying always have a contingency plan. Absolutely, a contingency fund is powerful. Okay, so let's say we've crunched the numbers, yeah. we've got our financing, yeah. we're ready to jump in. Okay. Is there anything else we should be thinking about at this stage? <sighs> There's one more thing that I think often gets overlooked. What's that? It's your exit strategy. <laughs> it's an exit strategy already. I know it might seem premature, but trust me, having a plan in place from the very beginning can help you make smarter decisions down the road. Okay, so you're saying think about how long you plan to hold on to this investment. Yeah. If you're going to eventually sell it or maybe even transition it to a long-term rental. Exactly. Right. Because life throws curveballs. Yeah. Markets fluctuate. Your goals might change. Right. And having a clear exit strategy allows you to be flexible and make the most of those changes. Okay, so it's kind of like having a roadmap. 
It is. For the future of your investment, it's, even if that destination changes along the way. It helps you approach this whole venture with enthusiasm, but also a good dose of pragmatism. That's a good point. Okay, yeah. wow. Yeah. This financial deep dive has been really helpful. I feel like we've covered a lot. I think so too. From understanding different costs to yeah. projecting profitability to financing options yeah. and even thinking about an exit strategy. It's a lot to digest, but it's crucial information. It is. For anybody that's serious about this. Okay, so before we wrap up, yeah, I think we need to address one more really important part I, of this whole industry. Okay. The guest experience. Ah, yes. Yeah. Because what is a hospitality investment without happy guests? Right. It's all about the people. It is. That's where the magic happens. Yeah. Creating a memorable and positive experience for your guests can make all the difference, not just for their enjoyment, but for your bottom line. So true. I know I've definitely had stays that were like fine. Right. And then others that just like completely blew me away. And those are the ones I'm telling all my friends about. Exactly. Yeah. So what are those elements that elevate a stay from okay to unforgettable? Right. What's that secret sauce? Well, it starts with the basics. A clean and well-maintained property. Okay. That seems obvious. It does, but you'd be surprised <sighs> how many people don't get it right. I'm sure there are some horror stories out there. There are a lot. So guests expect a certain level of cleanliness and functionality. Yeah. If the shower head is barely working or the linens feel dingy, yeah. that's going to leave a negative impression. Right. You walk into a hotel room and there's a weird smell. It sets the tone for the whole stay. It really does. And beyond the property itself, clear and responsive communication is crucial. Oh, I agree with that. Yeah. I hate when... I don't know, like the check-in instructions or the Wi-Fi password. It's so frustrating. Or how to troubleshoot anything. Guests want to feel empowered and informed. Right. Having a system for prompt communication, whether it's through a messaging app, email, or even a phone call, makes a huge difference. It shows you care. Exactly. So we've got those foundational things. Okay. But how do we take it to that next level? Okay. What are some of the elements that create that wow factor? That's where the personalization and those special touches come in. Okay, like what? Think a welcome basket filled with local treats or a handwritten note greeting them by name. Oh, I love that. Yeah. It's like when hotels leave a little chocolate it's on your, your pillow. Little thing. It makes you feel special. It does. And those thoughtful recommendations that are tailored to your guests' interests. Right. Like, are they into food? Are they into history? Yes. Do they love the outdoors? You can really tailor those suggestions. You can. And it makes them feel like you understand their needs. Right. It's not just like a generic brochure. Exactly. You're curating an experience. Yeah. And don't underestimate the power of anticipating their needs before they even realize they have them. Oh, like what? Like, if you know a family with young children is arriving, yeah. have a couple age-appropriate toys and books available. I've stayed at a hotel and they had a crib already set up. Exactly. Oh. It takes such a weight off your shoulder. It does. And remember, happy guests are your best marketing. Oh, for sure. Because they're more likely to leave positive reviews, recommend you to their friends and family, and even come back themselves. Word of mouth is so powerful. It's like a ripple effect. It is. Invest in that guest experience. Yeah. Make them feel pampered, understood, and connected to the place they're visiting, and it will pay off in the long run. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Okay, so yeah. this has been a lot of information. It has been a very comprehensive deep dive. It has. We've covered so much. From the types of investments and the finances to the guest experience. Wow, I feel like we've really gone deep. We have. Yeah. But hopefully this has given you a solid foundation to start exploring this world right. with confidence and a discerning eye. And like with any investment, knowledge is power. Absolutely. The more informed you are, the better decisions you're going to make. 100%. Okay, so yeah. as we kind of wrap up here, I want to leave everyone with one final thought to kind of ponder Okay. as you continue to explore this world. I like it. Imagine yourself as the guest. Okay. What kind of experience are you looking for? Ooh, that's good. What would make you feel truly welcomed and delighted? Because that's the key. It is. To success in this industry is understanding and even exceeding expectations. Love it. Well, thanks for joining us on The Step Dive. Of course. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. It was fun. We'll see you guys next time. See ya. Okay, so we've talked about, you know, crunching the numbers and like weighing the risks and planning for the future of these investments. Right, the nitty gritty. But now it's time to kind of shift gears and talk about 
I think the heart of it all, okay. guest yeah. experience. Yeah, because at the end of the day, no matter how beautiful the property is or how savvy your marketing is, right. it's the experience that matters. It's what makes people come back. It is. It turns a one-time visitor into like a loyal advocate who spreads the word and comes back for more. For sure. Like I've had stays that were just okay. Yeah, yeah. You know, right. but then others that were just like amazing. amazing and I'm telling all my friends about it. Exactly. So yeah. what elevates a stay from okay to unforgettable? Yeah, what's that secret? Well, it all starts with the basics. A clean and well-maintained property. Okay, so that's like the bare minimum. It should be obvious, but you'd be surprised. I'm sure there are some horror stories out there. Well, there are plenty. People cutting corners. Guests expect a certain level of cleanliness and functionality. Right. So if the shower head's barely working or the linens feel kind of dingy, that's going to leave a bad impression. It's like when you walk into a hotel room and there's just like a weird smell. Oh, yeah. It sets the tone for the whole stay. Immediately. Yeah. And beyond the physical property, clear and responsive communication is key. Oh, that's huge for me. I hate feeling like I'm in the dark about the check-in instructions or the wifey password or if something breaks down. Totally. It can be so frustrating. Like, how do I fix this? <laughs> Guests want to feel empowered and informed. Right. So having a system for quick communication, whether it's through messaging app, email, or even just a phone call, makes a huge difference. Yeah. It shows that you care. It does. You're on top of it. Exactly. Okay, so we've got those foundational things. Yeah. But how do we take it to that next level? Okay. How do we create those wow moments? That's where the personalization comes in, those little extra touches. Okay, give me some examples. Think about a welcome basket with some local goodies or a handwritten note greeting the guest by name. Oh, that's so nice. Right. It's like when hotels leave a chocolate on your pillow. Exactly. It's a small thing, but it makes you feel special. It does. And then, you know, providing those thoughtful recommendations that are tailored to the guest's interests. Like if they're foodies or history buffs. Exactly. Or if they love being outdoors. You can really personalize those suggestions. You can. And it makes them feel like you get them. Right. Like you're not just handing them a generic tourist brochure. It feels more authentic. Exactly. You're curating an experience. I like that. And don't underestimate the power of anticipating their needs before they even realize they have them. Okay, give me an example. So let's say a family with young kids is coming. Okay. Having some age-appropriate toys and books available can make a world of difference. Oh, yeah. I've stayed at a hotel that had a crib already set up. Exactly. It's such a relief. It's a lifesaver. And remember... Happy guests are your best marketing tool. Word of mouth is everything. It is. They're more likely to leave good reviews, recommend you to their friends and family, and even come back themselves. It's like a ripple effect. It is. Invest in that guest experience. Yeah. Make them feel pampered, understood, and connected to the place they're visiting, and it will pay off. Okay, so I think the big takeaway here yeah. is that it's the little things that really make a difference. They do. The small touches can have a big impact. Absolutely. Yeah. So we've talked about like the numbers side of things and making sure we have a good plan. Right. The financials and all okay. that. But now it's time to talk about the guest experience. Yeah, because, I mean, what's a hospitality investment without happy guests? Right. It's all about the people. It is. And, you know, creating that memorable experience for your guests can really make all the difference, not just for them, but for your bottom line, too. Totally. I, like, I know I've stayed at places that were fine. Right. But the ones that really stand out are the ones that just wowed me. Yeah, the unforgettable ones. The ones you tell all your friends about. Exactly. So what takes a stay from just okay to amazing? Yeah. What's the secret sauce? It all starts with the basics, really a clean and well-maintained property. I mean, that seems pretty obvious. You think so. But you'd be surprised. I bet there are some horror stories out there. Oh, there are plenty of people cutting corners. Yikes. Yeah. Guests expect a certain level of cleanliness and functionality. Of course. So if the shower head's barely working or the linens are kind of dingy. Right. Nobody wants that. It's going to leave a bad impression. Totally. Like walking into a hotel room and there's a weird smell. Ugh. Yeah. That sets the tone for the whole stay. It really does. And beyond the physical property itself, clear and responsive communication is key. Oh, yeah. I hate when I don't have the check-in instructions or the wifey password or if something breaks down and I don't know who to call. It's frustrating. It is. Guests want to feel empowered and informed. Makes sense. So having a system for quick communication, whether it's through a messaging app or email or even just a good old-fashioned phone call, yeah, it can make a huge difference. It shows that you're on top of it and that you care. Exactly. Okay. So we've got those foundational elements. Okay. 
But how do we take it to that next level? That's where you add the personalization and those special touches. Okay, so what does that look like? Think about a welcome basket with some local snacks or a handwritten note greeting the guests by name. Oh, I love that personal touch. Yeah. It's like when hotels leave a little chocolate on your pillow. It's a small gesture, but it makes you feel special. Right, and you remember it. Exactly, and then providing those thoughtful recommendations that are tailored to your guests' interests. Yeah, like if they're foodies or history buffs. Exactly, or they love the outdoors. Yeah. You can really personalize it for them. It's not just a generic brochure. Right. It's a curated experience just for them. I love that. And, you know, don't underestimate the power of anticipating their needs before they even realize they have them. Give me an example. So let's say, you know, a family with young kids is coming. Okay. Having some age-appropriate toys and books available can really make their stay easier. Yeah. I once stayed at a hotel that had a crib already set up. Right. It's a lifesaver. It was. And remember, happy guests are your best marketing tool. Oh, for sure. Word of mouth is everything. It is. They're more likely to leave good reviews, tell their friends and family, and even come back themselves. It's that ripple effect. Exactly. So invest in that guest experience. Make them feel pampered and understood and connected to that place, and it will pay off. Awesome. Okay, so to wrap up this whole deep dive, I think we've really learned a lot. We've covered a ton of information. We started with understanding all the different types of hospitality investments out there. From vacation rentals to boutique hotels to those luxury resorts. And then we dug deep into the financials. Making sure you understand all those costs and potential profits. And we even talked about planning for the future with that exit strategy. Yeah, it's important to think ahead. And then, of course, we wrapped it up by focusing on the heart of it all. Creating that amazing guest experience. Because happy guests mean a successful investment. They really do. So whether you're just starting to explore this world or you're already a seasoned investor, I think the key takeaway here is that knowledge is power. Couldn't agree more. The more you know, the better decisions you'll make. Absolutely. And remember, it's all about finding what works for you. Yeah. Your goals, your resources, and your risk tolerance. Find your niche. Exactly. So thanks for joining us on this deep dive. Yeah, this was a good one. And we'll see you next time.